welcome back to modded minecraft season one restarted so if you check our hotbar and what we have in our inventory you can tell pretty much what we are going to be working on today so There we go. So we are going to work on setting up a wheat farm today. Well, and it's not just going to be a wheat farm. It's going to be an all-around farm. Our first one is going to be wheat, of course. There we go. The chicken should leave us alone now. Gonna go ahead and place this. Oh. We go so one two three four There we go. Place these in the wrong spot, so they'll get moved down here in a minute. And I don't mind using the host to do this because they're faster than just using my hands and B, I've got a ton of them. Okay, so those are picked back up. So, one, two, three, four. Farming mechanics. It's a good time to go ahead and talk about them a little bit. So, The mechanics of farming in Minecraft are not too difficult, but they can be a little bit complicated. Um, 
and we'll go ahead and hit the bed before. So Minecraft has a has quite a few different types of crops. Well, or I should say plants. So we have the obvious trees. We have the flowers. Um, we have, I'm going to call them our non, I, I don't really know what to call them actually, but included in our second category is going to be the grass, um, seaweed, and kelp and that kind of stuff whose farming mechanics are sort of different. Grass, obviously, if you harvest grass, if I had a grass blocked out, out here, I'm either going to get nothing or I'm going to get a wheat seed. Unless I harvest it with shears, then I'll get this plant, which I can then can put back down. Otherwise, to actually get more grass, I have to uh, use bone meal on a grass block. Otherwise, this doesn't grow. Same thing with flowers. That's why they fall into the same category. Um, seaweed, this stuff down here that you feed to turtles, is the same way. Kelp grows a little bit different. You put down a base plant and it grows upward. It's going to be in the same category as bamboo and sugarcane. We then have our growable plants, which as a base has the normal mechanics that we're going to talk about here. So I've got this sort of, I've done the prep work for this, so I can just go through and plant them. But what prep work does that include? So to plant a crop, you have to be able to make the dirt block or the grass block into farmland, which of course you need a hoe for. Second requirement is light level. It has to have a light level of at least seven. Otherwise, the plants will not, the seeds will possibly grow in the ground. Um, usually you can't place them, so it's a pretty quick way of telling whether or not you have a big enough or a great enough light level. Second thing is the level of press F3 for this. Moisture level, level. So the next thing you have to worry about when you are planting crops is the moisture lever, level. The level of moisture in the block will help the plant grow of course. If the plant, if the seed does not have access to any moisture, it won't grow. Matter of fact, you will, the plant will usually die and you'll have a seed sitting here. And for that to happen, it has to be within four blocks, one, two, three, four blocks of a water source. And ouch. 
correct that. So as you can see, I've already set up most of this. There we go. That way we can still walk over it, but it's not going to do damage to the plants and we're not going to fall in the hole. But this method works for all of our remaining growable plants. Um, beetroot, carrots, potatoes, wheat. Now, the, be it, the ability to just plant it in the rows like this only works on carrots, potatoes, wheat, beetroot, I might have been too generous with this. When it comes to pumpkins and melons, um, they have to be planted in a crisscross pattern or a checkered board pattern. So every other, for those two, you want every other to have a plant because those two require a block for the stem and a block for the um, food source. So in this case, the actual pumpkin itself, the melon itself, is a separate block. So, if I had a, if I was planting pumpkins here, I would do this block, this block, this block. Oh my, I'm out. And so on and so forth in a checkered board pattern across this. That way, it can grow here. The plant or the block plant itself can grow in the positions that it is not, that the stem is not in. So if the stem is here, it can grow here, 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 if this plant is not here, or theoretically here. Now it probably wouldn't grow here just because of block mechanics. Because this block is in the way and it is one block higher, um, I do not believe it would actually grow here. But otherwise, it would grow in all of those other locations. And I don't have enough seeds to plant this entire field. I just don't. Yet. Will I eventually, hopefully, Usually I would make this automatic, but if you have the field big enough, it's, you don't need wheat forever. So this time we are not making an automatic wheat farm. I'm just doing a wheat field and going from there. We have our automatic steak farm up there, cow crusher. But I don't plan on, uh, right now we're still eating bread. I'm trying to get rid of some of it. I'm not crafting anymore, but I am trying to get rid of what we already have. But I will need wheat to keep feeding the cows until we get to the point where I want to use a different food, so food source. Eventually, I am hoping for 
to go ahead and craft up an automatic farm. Uh, completely automatic, not a semi-automatic that it usually builds. have enough blocks for this. There we go. But there is a few outliers. Um, sweetberry bushes are a bush and they have a farming mechanic all their own which we will be talking about in just a minute because it is somewhat unique to just them. And of course, glowberries now have a farming mechanic of their own. So but that is the farming mechanics for the for those specific ones. So if we go ahead and head down here Golden carrots and golden apples have to be crafted. Bread is, of course, crafted from wheat. Melon slices are what you get when you break a melon block if you don't have silk touch. Pumpkin seeds you get from car carving a pumpkin. Suspicious stew you get from something else. And of course, you get cooked cod from cod, cooked salmon from salmon eggs you get from the chickens and you can add them together with milk and a couple other things to get I believe pumpkin pie cake and a few other recipes glow berries and sweet berries have their own mechanic and we are going to go ahead and talk about them real quick Whoa. I thought I had crafted a set. We're going to have to go get one. I was not expecting that. The pair I crafted must have broken. Yes, I was pretty sure I had some. If we head over here towards the village, and I'm not meaning the small village over here, I'm meaning the big village over there, we are headed to one of the greenhouses real quick, and we will talk about the glowberries real quick. They're pretty straightforward. So we go over here. Glowberries are native to the lush cave biome. And I'm pretty sure we have one over here. Let me find the greenhouse. If I can remember where it is. There's one. 
we have these. So if I clip it with the shears, it will give me glowberries. If I clip the end of it, it will stop it from growing. If I put if I bone meal one of the vines, it will automatically grow a berry. If it already has a berry on it, it will automatically harvest it and grow another berry. Now, sweet berry bushes are yet again different. And I haven't prepped all the materials to do an actual farm of sweet berry bushes. But we will go ahead and talk about the farm. We'll probably cobble it together here in the next couple of episodes. I would like to grow some more first because we don't honestly have a whole lot here. So like with any other seed, the glowberry so like if you had carrots or potatoes the glowberry is your seed unlike beetroot where you actually need beetroot seeds or wheat where you actually need wheat seeds if you have a sweet berry you have access to it you have access so, if we come over here and I place a bush, every other thing, it will grow a bush. Now, there is a problem. If I approach this bush, it's too small. I'm going to have to wait for it to grow up. Anyways, if I approach this bush, and instead of being age which is zero, it will stick me and I will lose health from touching this bush like the glowberries um, you can either punch it destroying the plant and get your berries that way or you can see if I approach now that that one's grown I should be able to see like that I took damage I take damage. So usually if you are doing a grow a sweet berry farm, you you can do it a couple different ways. I usually do it so that there is a path going between them where I can just go down this path and I've got an elevated block here and these are planted on the elevated block and I can just go down the path here and harvest them. Um, another way if you're doing it this way is you can put a slab on top of each one of these going all the way down and because the slab is a full block you will not be able to actually run into the bush and keep all of your hearts without sacrificing any food source um the main reason people will prefer one food source over another is a how much it restores and b the saturation level a sweet berry only has one set is pretty much the same as eating bread it only has one saturation and it only restores one health bar um i actually think bread can do two um, the same with, now, that would be the same level as the glowberry, and I do believe melons. Um, and along that note, how much it restores and how much saturation you get can be different. On a glowberry, it may be one and one. And on, if you eat some steak, it may be three and three. But I do believe if you eat, what is it? 
pumpkin pumpkin pie I think you get it restores like three but it only has a saturation level of like one and saturation level goes especially if you're in hard difficulty where you can actually die from hunger um it goes and it helps determine how long until you have to until your hunger bar starts to go down again so like my hunger bar just started going down again Now, once you get into some of the more um, magical foods, enchanted golden apples, golden apples, golden carrots, you can get some extra bonuses from all of that. If you eat a golden apple, you get an enchanted, you get an extra healing factor and all of that kind of stuff. So eating one food over the other can certainly help. Of course, Cooked por forms of the food is always going to be better than raw. Um, a cooked potato can be as good as eating steak. Whereas eating a raw potato, or in this manner, a raw beef, or a raw pork chop, won't give you as much as if you had spent the extra resources and cooked it. So, Suspicious Stew is another category all on its own, in that depending on how it was crafted, it will give you a random effect. Um, melons can of course be changed into glistening melons, but that's usually a potion ingredient. We've got beetroot down here, um, we've got sugar cane, which is of course it's still a plant, which is why it's in here, but it's not really a food source, which is why I'm actually going to take it on out. But we've got raw rabbit, we've got raw potatoes, carrots actually need to go in the top one. Eggs are supposed to be down here, we've got our hay bales down here, poisonous potatoes, um, raw pork chops, we've got our bowls for once we get the full thing, mushrooms, and then we can make both mushroom stew and suspicious stew. Boabab fruit is actually from the BYG, and I've eaten them a couple of times, but I don't know if they actually give us any um, food points or anything like that. And then apples, I've got, went ahead and put down there because I generally, a regular apple only gives you like one for one, but if you give a golden apple, it gives you like three for three. But you also get the extra time of healing. Not quite as much as like if you eat an enchanted golden apple. But the enchanted golden apples give you a couple of other effects too. So. In the meantime, that is going to be our farming and food episode. I think I have covered everything. Oh, not quite everything. So. Like. Sorry. Like wheat and beetroot, melons and potatoes. I believe it is the same with melons. I know it's the same with pumpkins. Pumpkins, not potatoes. Need seeds. You don't believe. Let's see. If we set this here and I go over here, it will give me a melon seed. To plant the melon, I actually need the seed to grow the stem. So, eggs go in here, sweet berries go on top, as do the glowberries. These seeds go down here. Otherwise, the sugar cane actually needs to go in there. We're going to go ahead and drop the ink sacks on in there, too. You are not supposed to be in there. So you are not supposed to be in here. So 
So, otherwise, we have some bamboo up here. We've got some sugar cane up here, which, like I said, grows a specific way. Cactus also grows that way. As long as you have one plant down, it will grow like sugar cane, three high. Now, kelp and bamboo will grow to be 16 high, I do believe. And the way that you get pumpkin seeds is you put down a pumpkin, you carve it, and you get at least one pumpkin seed, I do believe. And you get a carved pumpkin. You have the chance of dropping two. And of course, if you get fortune on your pit, on your shears, you can do more. Um, I know the shears have the opportunity for fortune on bedrock. I can't remember whether they have it on Java anymore. But... That is going to be this episode of Modded Minecraft Restarted. Thank you for watching, and have a great and wonderful Minecraft day.